Good day. This video is about gala. No, not gala as in party, but about the General Administrative Law Act, the main document in administrative law in the Netherlands. Now, administrative law sounds very abstract, but actually it's not. Imagine getting ready for that other kind of gala, but having a date who's in a very bad mood because he just received a low grade and feels that the teacher was biased. And finding out that your other friend has just as bad a mood because he's just heard that he's been refused compensation for an electric wheelchair that he wanted so much. Or that the owner of the nice castle where you're supposed to have your gala tells you that he's been fined because he allowed people to smoke cigars there in the past. All these issues fall under administrative law and thus under the General Administrative Law Act, the GALA. Of course, in all cases, there are special laws that would also be relevant, such as the Law on Higher Education, or the Social Support Act, or the Tobacco Act. And of course, these norms also fall under higher norms, such as those lie down in the Constitution, like, for instance, the principle of equal treatment, and in European and international law, as is the case with human rights. Also, all the laws would be worked out in decrees, in ordinances, in regulations, like the tobacco decree as well. But the gala is the little black dress here, the thing that you'll always need, and that is really the main document in administrative law. It sets out in very general terms what administrative authorities are, where they get their powers from, how they enforce them, what norms they should comply with, and what you can do if you have a problem with them. And it ha very much has its own terminology and logic, which I'd like to set out in this clip. So let's first look at the central concept of administrative authority. The administration consists of administrative authorities. And according to Article 1 of the GALA, an administrative authority is an organ an office or an officer, or a legal entity established under public law or a person or body invested with public authority. So that can be a municipality, but also the mayor, a university, but also the examiner. The big thing is that it has public power. It can give fines or subsidies or grades. It can change something in your legal position. It can organize social relations. Now, because this power is quite far-fetching, it needs a statutory basis, a basis in a law passed by our elected parliamentarians. This power can then be attributed or delegated. Attribution is about granting original power, whereas delegation means a shift of power and responsibilities. Now, these are the only two ways in which an administrative authority can get its public power. This is very much the principle of legality. One instance of delegation is, for instance, what you see with decentralization of powers to public bodies, such as municipalities, provinces or water boards. So the municipality that would have taken the decision on the wheelchair of your friend would have done so on the basis of decentralized powers in the field of social services. Another way in which an administrative authority can get its power is via deconcentration. For instance, um, in the way in which public servants get their own original or derived powers. This, for instance, is the case with the Netherlands Food Safety Authority that would have given out the fines for smoking. And a third way in which administrative authorities get their power is because they are independent administrative organs, ZBO's in Dutch. They are established by statutes and they have the power to take public law juridical acts. So, for instance, the university where your friend studies would typically be such an independent administrative organ. Now, all this also shows that one administrative authority can have different organs or officers with public law powers. So, for instance, the examiner that gave out the grade would be an office. 
or the municipal executive that actually took the decision on the wheelchair would be one as well. The same applies for the actual inspector that came. They hold public law offices within the administrative authority concerned. Okay, now universities, municipalities, inspectorates, they do stuff. And lots of what they do uh, does not consist juridical acts, for instance, cleaning the windows. Part of what they do is legal, but does not fall under administrative law. So, for instance, if a university buys new computers, this will be a contract under private law. And then the university does so as a legal person, so a private law legal person, not as an administrative authority. Now, this is important to distinguish because a whole different field of law then applies. But here, with the gala, we're talking about administrative authorities that have public power. And with it, the power to really unilaterally change our lives or those of other entities. And administrative authorities do so by means of decisions. And decision, besluit, is another key term in the gala. You might think, what is so special about a decision? But here it's a legal act with legal consequences, but also with legal protection. Such a decision can be generally applicable. So, for instance, where a municipality decides that all bars have to close before a certain time, this would be called a generally applicable uh, regulation. Or, for instance, the policy of a university that grades have to be communicated within two weeks. This would be a decision of general application, but it's for a general audience. Many of the decisions that administrative authorities take actually concern individual cases, the so-called beschikkingen, which can be against a person, but also against a company or another legal entity. And here there's hundreds of decisions to think of. It can be about permits, driving license, uh, social benefits, uh, decisions on a migration status, permission to demonstrate uh, um, appointments in a certain office, um, granting a tree monumental status, allowing for the rebuilding of a castle, setting taxes, etc., etc. All decisions in individual cases. But whatever the decision, it has to comply with the principles of proper administration, the algemene beginselen van behoorlijk bestuur. Now, when the gala came into working in 1994, most were laid down there, although some are unwritten. A first general principle of proper administration is the prohibition of bias. The public authority and administrative authority cannot be biased. A next principle is that each and every administrative authority needs to take its decisions with due care, weighing all interests involved. This is in Article 3.2 and 3.4 of the GALA, for instance. Another thing is that administrative authorities receive a specific power and should only use it for that specific purpose. So I should not give you a grade to ensure that you later on help clean my garden because the, it's, the grading is for the purpose of helping your education. If an administrative authority abuses this power, it amounts to détournement de pouvoir, abuse of power, which is obviously prohibited. Now, another principle is that decision making should not be arbitrary. So there's a prohibition of arbitrariness. Next, the use of public power should be proportional. So it can't be that one interested party suffers needless adverse effects or even much more adverse effects of the decision than others. Next, still in the gala, um, it's very important that the public authority motivates its decision, gives its reasons for a certain decision. There's also a range of uncodified principles, for instance, the need for a public authority to meet legitimate expectations, uh, the idea of legal certainty, and also the principle of equal treatment. 
So these are all substantive norms that the administration has to comply with. The gala, however, also entails all kinds of procedural guarantees, such as the steps that have to be taken by the administrative authority before taking the decision. For big decisions, for instance, that affect a lot of people, there's what is called a uniform preparation procedure. So, for instance, if the province would want to have a highway pass where the castle is, it would start with a draft decision where all interest parties, interested parties can give their views. It's called Sienswijze. So this is for these um, uniform uh, preparation procedures, but also in individual decisions, there's a whole host of procedural guarantees. For instance, the time that the authority can take to reach a decision. Now, a lot goes well in what administrative authorities do. We get subsidies, we get grants, loans, diplomas, driver's licenses, permits, but there are as everywhere, also potential conflicts. Your friend, for instance, who is so angry about the grade, or the person who's so angry about the wheelchair, or the castle owner with the fine. What legal recourse do they have? Well, in virtually all cases, the first thing to do is to object to the administrative authority itself. This objection is called bezwaar in Dutch. And the gala covers this, for instance, by saying that you have six weeks to object and that the administration then has six weeks to respond. And this can be the municipality or the exam commission or the authority that gave the fine for the smoking. And if you are then unhappy with the decision, um, you can lodge a case at the district court. So then you actually go to court. And if you are still unhappy, appeal it. Now, if either you or the administrative authority are still unhappy with the decision taken, with the ruling now by the um, court and the appeals court, there's actually four different highest administrative bodies in the Netherlands. If it's about tax, a tax decision, it would actually end up with the Supreme Court. If it's a social security or a public service case, it would end up with the Centrale Raad van Beroep, the Central Appellate Administrative Court. So this is where your friend in the wheelchair would end up um, arguing that he needs an electric wheelchair. Economic and trading decisions, such as the fine for the allowing of smoking of cigars, would ultimately end up with the corporation's tribunal. And all other cases would end up with the judicial department of our Council of State. So that is where the friend with a bad grade, if he's very unhappy and has a very long breath, would end up. Of course, administrative decisions can affect a lot of people. And um, for instance, when we talk about environmental pollution, there's a lot of interested parties. And a lot of the gala is also about who is actually an interested party, who can go to court here. And one key thing is that um, if you invoke an interest, um, you have to invoke the law protecting that interest. So it has to be about that particular law. This is called the principle of the Schutz norm. Okay, so if you go to court, what will judges do? Um, well, first they will review um, the decision against rules of written and unwritten law. And as you might remember, they can also review lower norms against higher norms. So for instance, if the regulations of the university actually comply with the law on higher education, they can point that out. What they'll also do is they'll only apply a marginal test. So they'll not go and really sit um, on the chair of the administration, but just marginally look whether um, it could have uh, reached this decision. 
to be honest, this has kind of shifted over time. Before um, the role of the courts was really more to kind of supervise the administration, what was called recours objectif. And now the courts um, have moved more towards siding with the individual. So what's called recours subject, uh, subjective, recours subjective, which means that um, whatever ruling comes out, the individual, for instance, cannot uh, be worse, uh, worse off. Okay, so that's what they'll do legally, but what can they decide? What remedies do they have? Well, of course, um, courts can say that a case is unadmissible or they can say it's unfounded. But what if a case is founded? What if your friends and the castle owner do um, have a, uh, a point here um, substantiated by law? Well, if a case is founded, there's a whole range of le remedies. Courts can, for instance, annul decisions. They can also order a new decision or even order some kind of replacement. They can actually give the administration the option of repairing their initial decision. But they can also give provisional rulings. For instance, um, if it's about planning to chop a tree to really say that this is not allowed. Now, it could be that because of this whole case, you suffered damages. For instance, if your friend, because he didn't get the wheelchair, couldn't take up a job, uh, then there's damages that he incurred and that he could actually claim also in front of the administrative law uh, court. But then the law to be applied is judge, average Dutch torts law. Um, so there we are back to private law, but with the administrative court um, applying it. Um, sometimes you can even receive damages if an act was lawful. For instance, if the highway was built next to the castle, you can receive damages even if the administrative authority deciding this was fully within the uh, law. So this is in a way the court route, but there are other places to turn to if you're unhappy with administrative authorities. You can, for instance, go to the ombudsman who looks much more broadly into the propriety of government actions, the behoorlijkheid of what they do. Okay, so these are the instruments that you have against the administrative authority. But what instruments does the administrative authority have against you to ensure that you comply with educational law, social laws, smoke, uh, smoking law, for instance. Again, there's a wide range of instruments. There's supervision instruments, but there's also sanctioning instruments. So there is, for instance, uh, what's called bestuurstwang, where the authority can state that you should stop your illegal activity or actually stop it for you and recover the costs from you. That's Mr. Um Administrative authorities can also give you an order under penalty, a, a dwang sum, sum, so to stop doing something and otherwise you get a, a fine per day, for instance. They can also directly give you an administrative penalty, as was in the case with the smoking. But they can also, for instance, stop social benefits, withdraw a permit, etc. So they have quite heavy instruments. One thing to realize is that administrative authorities don't have to always pull out the hammer. They have quite a bit of discretion, especially because they should weigh interests. And they can at times, for instance, condone a situation which is technically illegal. So these are the administrative uh, instruments that an administrative authority has um, for the purpose of enforcement. There are other ways for administrative authorities to get their way. One um, thing is, of course, that they also, as legal entities, um, can make use of private law. So if there's something they're unhappy with, they could start a, a torts case, for instance. But... Um, they can only do that, this is established case law, where public law is not the most logical route to take. So public law comes first, say. 
What they can also do is they can make use of, of criminal law, for instance, by getting the public prosecutor involved. So, for instance, with uh, economic crimes or um, really abusing the what happens in the castle, then it can actually call in the public prosecutor who would then uh, establish a crime and invoke criminal law. As a general trend in the Netherlands, you see criminal and administrative law um, getting closer together and being closer than you think, because also some uh, penalties can be really high and have like a punitive dimension. So, for instance, the fine for allowing smoking or for um, allowing people to, to, to work without having the right papers. Here, penalties can really take on a punitive character and there's actually quite a big discussion on whether there should then not be the legal safeguards that you have with criminal cases for instance um, as laid down in the European Convention on Human Rights. So that is it. You now know all the important stuff about the General Administrative Law Act in the Netherlands, what it considers to be an administrative authority, the notion of decisions, and what norms these have to comply with, and also where you can go if you are unhappy with these decisions. And you also know that whereas some people might think that galas are only there at the end of the semester, before the summer and the Christmas break, there's actually a lot of gala to be found in our daily lives. And with that, I thank you for listening. <laughs>